it's pretty clear Biden lost the debate. Yes, it's ridiculous there was no fact-checking. Yes, Biden had his usual goofs and gaffes, but I don't care about the stuttering. I don't even care that he's old. Bernie is older than both these guys combined, and he's still delivering his old man rants just fine. What I care about is the absolute train wreck of a response Biden gave to the Roe v. Wade question. This is the first presidential election since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. This morning, the court ruled on yet another abortion case, temporarily allowing emergency abortions to continue in Idaho, despite that state's restrictive ban. Former President Trump, you take credit for the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, which returned the issue of abortion to the states. Correct. However, the federal government still plays a role in whether or not women have access to abortion pills. They're used in about two-thirds of all abortions. As president, would you block abortion medication? First of all, the Supreme Court just approved the abortion pill, and I agree with their decision to have done that, and I will not block it. And if you look at this whole question that you're asking, a complex but not really complex, 51 years ago, you had Roe v. Wade, and everybody wanted to get it back to the states, everybody, without exception, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, everybody wanted it back, religious leaders. And what I did is I put three great Supreme Court justices on the court, and they happened to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade and moving it back to the states. This is something that everybody wanted. Now, 10 years ago or so, they started talking about how many weeks and how many this, getting into other things. But every legal scholar throughout the world, the most respected, wanted it brought back to the states. I did that. Now the states are working it out. If you look at Ohio, it was a decision that was, it was a, an end result that was a little bit more liberal than you would have thought. Uh, Kansas, I would say the same thing. Uh, Texas is different. Florida is different. But they're all making their own decisions right now. And right now, the states control it. That's the vote of the people. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in the exceptions. I am a person that believes. And frankly, I think it's important to believe in the exceptions. Some people, you have to follow your heart. Some people don't believe in that. But I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. I think it's very important. Some people don't. Follow your heart. But you have to get elected also. And because that has to do with other things. You got to get elected. The problem they have is they're radical because they will take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth, if you look at the former governor of Virginia, he was willing to do this. He said, we'll put the baby aside and we'll determine what we do with the baby, meaning we'll kill the baby. What happened is we brought it back to the states and the country is now coming together on this issue. It's been a great thing. Thank you. Even Republicans can recognize Trump's lie here. Overturning Roe v. Wade was incredibly unpopular and likely cost Republicans the midterms. Losing abortion rights was one of the worst long-term consequences of Trump's presidency, and there is overwhelming support for Biden to bring it back at the federal level. Republicans' best hope during elections was to just avoid talking about it, but their new hope is to let Biden talk about it instead. Thank you. President Biden? It's been a terrible thing, what you've done. The fact is that the vast majority of constitutional scholars supported Roe when it was decided. Support it, Roe. And that was that's, this idea that they were all against it is just ridiculous. And this is the guy who says the state should be able to have it. We're in a state where in six weeks, you don't even know whether you're pregnant or not, but you cannot see a doctor have your, and have him decide on what your circumstances are, whether you need help. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying we're going to turn civil rights back to the states. Let each state have a different rule. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he, he went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming in, to, they talk about that. But here's the deal. He chose to remind everyone that the immigrants are raping and murdering our women. That's supposed to be Trump's talking point. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. We shouldn't be hearing that from a Democratic candidate. He almost salvaged it at the end, and I at least understand what he was going for. 
look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he, he went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming in, to, they talk about that. But here's the deal. There's a lot of young women who are being raped by their, by their in-laws, by their, by, by their spouses, brothers and sisters. By just, it's, it's just ridiculous. And they can do nothing about it. And they try to arrest them when they cross state lines. Thank you. According to the U.S. Sentencing Commission, going back to 2018, a full 95% of sexual abusers each year were U.S. citizens. Almost all of them were male, and the majority were white. Hey look, Joe, there's one right next to you. Maybe talk about that rapist instead. And according to the Criminal Victimization Survey from the Bureau of Justice, only 25% of rapes in the past 12 years were committed by strangers. Biden was correct that it's partners and acquaintances committing the majority of sexual violence. Despite the right-wing rhetoric, this is not an immigration problem. Except, he never connected it back to Roe v. Wade. So I have to wonder, why turn the discussion that way in the first place? Trump didn't bring up immigrants in his answer, so why did Biden? Trump's main argument was the debunked Republican lie about post-birth abortions. The problem they have is they're radical because they will take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth, if you look at the former governor of Virginia... He was willing to do this. He said, we'll put the baby aside and we'll determine what we do with the baby, meaning we'll kill the baby. That means he can take the life of the baby in the ninth month and even after birth because some states, Democrat run, take it after birth. Again, the governor, former governor of Virginia, put the baby down, then we decide what to do with it. So he's, in, he's willing to, as we say, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month and kill the baby. Under Roe v. Wade, you have late-term abortion. You can do whatever you want, depending on the state. You can do whatever you want. We don't think that's a good thing. We think it's a radical thing. We think the Democrats are the radicals, not the Republicans. Biden could have explained how stupid that term is because killing a newborn baby is not an abortion and has always been illegal. Biden could have explained that the Ralph Northam interview that Trump cited was about how doctors would handle a non-viable birth. Something that Biden could have mentioned is becoming more common in states with abortion bans. The context is pretty clear when you listen to the actual interview. Um, there are, you know, when we talk about third trimester uh, abortions, these are done uh, with the consent uh, of obviously the, the mother, with the consent uh, of the physicians, more than one physician, by the way. Um, and it's done in cases where there may be severe deformities, there may be a, a, a fetus that's non-viable. So in this particular example, uh, if a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, the infant would be delivered, uh, the infant would be kept comfortable, uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired, and then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So, so I think this was really blown out of proportion, uh, but again, we want the government not to be involved in these types of decisions. We want the decision to be made by uh, the, the mothers and their providers, and, and this is why Julie, that legislators, most of whom are men, by the way, shouldn't be telling a woman what she should and shouldn't be doing with her body. Biden could have then explained that forcing people to carry non-viable pregnancies to term is not only abhorrent, but dangerous for the parent's health. Biden could have mentioned that late-term abortions made up less than 1% of all abortions under Roe v. Wade. But we are not for late-term abortion, period, period, period. Okay, or not. Biden let Trump control the discussion, and I don't think I'm being a doomer when I say Trump won this portion of the debate, which never should have happened. A week of debate prep, and Joe comes out with some unprompted fear-mongering about immigrants, and then gets tripped up by the well-known Republican lie of post-birth abortions. And I'm supposed to believe that this is the best candidate to beat Trump? I said in my last video that I don't think either of these guys have dementia. And I still stand by that statement. But if Biden can't even defend abortion rights during a debate, then maybe he's not a good candidate. The people who actually decide these elections, as bad of a system as it is, are the undecided voters in swing states. And this time, there is no give Trump a chance, maybe he won't be as bad as you think. We've all seen what a Trump presidency is like. So you can keep asking those special little voters if they'd really prefer the mini fascist over the stuttering grandpa. But at some point you have to realize that their answer is, eh, maybe. Just because Trump sucks doesn't mean everyone has to vote Democrat. Or at all. 
and it shouldn't be left to the voters to justify whatever slop the DNC puts in front of us. I understand the DNC needed Biden to step in last election to stop Bernie from, I mean Trump, from winning, but he should have stuck to his one-term plan. It's technically not too late for the DNC to nominate someone else, something the majority of Democrat voters have been asking for since at least 2022, but now it would look messy and desperate. And also, they've already said they're not going to. They're really gonna make me vote for Joe Biden. Look, obviously I'm not changing my vote. I don't want trans people to be exterminated, so that alone disqualifies every right-wing candidate for me. And even though my presidential vote will again be nullified by the Electoral College, I refuse to give a protest vote to Mr. Real Life Ratatouille over there. So once again, I'll be voting for the most progressive, viable candidates in my local elections and hoping for the best with the presidential one. But if Trump wins again, it will be the DNC's fault. And don't let them tell you otherwise.